give me some ideas of what are some of the challenges you think you might come up against. What are people going to say? Like, are people going to say, I mentioned some before, I'm too creative to follow systems or we've always done things this way, why do we have to change what it is that we're doing? Or maybe they're creating that black box around them so that they have low accountability and low transparency, which gives them job security. So are there any other, like what are some of the challenges that you think you will come up against when it comes to introducing systems? Just a challenge in terms of introducing new systems when people, look, we, we work remotely, so yes. uh, I'm not actually there with a lot of my team members who are implementing the system, so it's, uh, you know, I'm very much a, oh, this is a great idea, let's, let's implement this system, and then being able to monitor it without feeling like I'm micromanaging them as well. Yes. Are you a visionary or an integrator? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. So I mean, one of the takeaways, as we get a little bit more into this, you'll kind of realise um, when it comes to compliance, getting some sort of integrator or someone who might be able to support you to do that will be really, really helpful. Um, and that looks like that's going to be your role. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, everybody's going to uh, have those challenges. So you just think about where your, your business is up to. If hopefully by the end of today you're kind of bought in on the idea of systemising the business and you'd like to bring this culture into your business, I would think of it in terms of getting three levels of buy-in. Firstly, as the visionary, you've got to buy into the idea that this is the direction that you want to head. Then you want to meet with your integrator and sell them on the idea. Oftentimes, integrators will get this and they'll pick it up very quickly and they'll say, great, are you sure you want to do this? Let's run with it. And then the final bit is introducing it through to the team. Now, depending on the size of the organisation, sometimes you might do that in two stages. It might be through to a department head first and then they introduce it to the lower level um, or, or the other team members. Um, or you could try and get everybody involved depending on, again, the size of that audience. Um, you just want to get and we'll talk about getting people involved in that process, showing them the critical client flow. For existing staff to get buy-in, you, you really want them involved in the process. There's no good in you doing all of this documentation and then turning around and saying, great, this is the way that we're now doing things. Everybody will be like, oh. Whereas if they're, if they're bought in and invested and helped you create it, you just need to think about what, what are the, the benefits for the individual. Most people are thinking in terms of, the business benefits and when they try and sell systems and introduce it through to their team, they're talking in terms of how it'll improve the business. It'll help us grow, it'll make us more efficient, we'll put out better quality products, we'll reduce the, the waste. It's going to give the business owner a little bit more freedom, it's going to add some value so when the business comes time to sell, it's going to be worth more. The team member doesn't, oftentimes doesn't really care about any of that. Like that's how does this initiative of systemization benefit them? And you want to be talking in terms of what's, what's good for them. So how do systems make their job easier? Everybody knows what it's like uh, when you take a holiday and you go away for two weeks and you come back and your inbox is full of emails and then you spend the next three weeks after your two-week holiday trying to work through your inbox to get tasks done and catch up and get back in front. Um, if you can let them know that by having systems in processes, it's much easier to take time off and to know that projects will continue to move even if they're not there. It makes their job easier. It, it means if they've got a, a problem, they can, they've got somewhere to go to get an answer. Sometimes, particularly for new hires, they'll, they're a little bit embarrassed. If they're taught something, they're embarrassed to ask a question because they think, oh, I should already know that. But if there's a resource that they can dip back into to get the answer, then that's a real benefit for them. Um, it helps team members skill up and re replace themselves. Like if you can build this culture that if you can systemise parts of your job and then delegate it to other team members, that's great because that makes you more valuable to the team. And then that means that now you can work up and move into the position that you would like. So again, it all comes down to thinking about what's the benefit for the staff member. And I know that makes it sound easy. Every business will have resistance and pushback depending on that size of the organisation. It'll just be because everybody is a little bit different. Everybody's got their own personalities. Some people, like 
and, and you'll see the difference in personalities across the different departments. Sometimes your sales team is going to be more outgoing. You compare that maybe to someone in your accounts team, they might be a little bit more shy. Or maybe in your creative team, they've got their own, everybody's got their own type of personality. So as you introduce this, you need to appeal to, to their personality and have them understand what is the benefit through to them. I think there was a question just up the back there. Sorry, just saying, if you, if you are the visionary and you, you, you say you're not the right person for implementing, documenting all these systems, and you don't have anyone within your business, what, what do you do then? Who can do it, do it for you? Then what? Yeah, so there's a few things that you can do. The first thing is to become aware that you need to fill that role at some point. You can start heading in the right direction with some of the earlier steps that I mentioned, like as far as figuring out your critical client flow, capturing some basic systems, maybe finding someone on the team that can help with documentation. So, so we reduce the input where you can try and delegate as much of that through to department heads. Do you have, depending on the size of your team, do you have, no? no so, so, so the- If you don't have anyone, if you're not the right person for it and you don't have anyone within your team yep. who, who is right for that. Yes, yep. Do you, do you have other team members? Like what size team are we talking about? So, so you might be systemising too early. So systemising really gets the most traction once you've probably got maybe five, ten staff. Are you kind of in that, th that zone or are you kind of like on the smaller end? Uh, well, we've got 30 staff. Yeah, but yep. But not, not anybody who's right for, no one can do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so you'll still be able to keep moving forward um, but focusing on capturing the systems just to get them down and then just become aware and start looking for that person. You might, I don't know if you've ever had that experience when you, I don't know, maybe you buy a new car and then you start to see that new car everywhere and it's just like everybody's gone out and purchased that same car that you've just purchased and uh, it, it's almost like they knew that you purchased it. Uh, but those cars have always been there. It's just become, when you become aware of it and you start looking for it, it's much easier to find that. So just be aware that that role isn't filled. Start keeping your eyes open for that person. They may be internal. They, they might not be internal. Don't let that stop you moving forward. You can still work on the critical client flow. Maybe you find a systems champion in the business who can at least lead the initiative forward of trying to capture some of these systems and the recording of the the critical client flow, and then longer term, you want to find someone for that role. So then we talked a little bit about the personalities. The other one that we see quite often is they're scared. I see sometimes people are worried when you introduce it through to their uh, through to the team that you're looking to systemize. That they're worried that you're going to create accountability. When you start to create systems, there becomes accountability, and also there's transparency on what's getting done. And and people sometimes f hide behind the fact that you don't know what you're doing. And then there's you as the business owner, there's a little bit of a fear there of you know, offending someone or stepping on toes because if they leave, no one knows how to do the accounts like this person and they reconcile it just right, it's gonna be really hard to try and recruit someone for that. So what you end up doing is giving them a little bit of black a black box that they can work between and there's very low transparency and visibility and now you're stuck. And, and that, we all know, is, is not good for the business. So we need to think about how do we do that? The other challenge you'll get, sometimes people just don't care. Like I've got a, uh, I've had in the past, there's a team member I could think of who, it just wasn't important to them. And we started to change direction in the business and saying, right, we're heading in this systems direction, either jump on board or maybe you're not right for this role. And as you start to systemize, and if you do get a good integrator who can help you with the rollout, people start to self-select them out. Like the, if they're not following systems and you've got someone managing the compliance, then you can performance manage them out. And then that, that's why it's harder the larger team you've got. Like if you set that culture early on, it's, it's so much easier with brand new staff because you're recruiting and showing them that you run by systems. So all of those challenges, when you have them, you, if you can find yourself that integrator, you really want that person to meet those challenges head on. You need that integrator to be able to talk with the team members, find out where their challenges are, if they're 
not open to documenting process or being involved in getting things recorded, if they're not following the systems and the processes, if you've introduced your project management tool and they're not signing off and saying, yes, I've got it and I've done it, then someone needs to enforce it. And for me, I was really bad at that because I was, you know, a people pleaser. I, I, I love to, you know, care for my staff and it meant oftentimes I'm holding on to staff too long that probably shouldn't have been in the organisation. And it wasn't until I kind of separated myself and then had a team member drive that. So just a few tips for the integrators in the room. And, and the integration is a big topic, but the first thing that you want to do is try and get the team involved as early as possible. And this is more for the existing team. Get them involved in the critical client flow. Um, make it easy for them to capture what you're doing. Um, the integrator needs to chat with the team member and, and should have an understanding of that type of personality. And integrators are good people managers and they know how to resolve conflict. So as they start to implement these things, they will have ideas on getting buy-in and introducing it. Try and make it easy for the team. Get a documenter, get someone else to do the documentation.